Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to calculate Cronbach's alpha for reliability and we're going to do this in SPSS. So before we start, let's take a look at the data that we're going to use in this test. Supposing I wanted to conduct a large test on uh, people's attitudes to medical care. But before I do so, I conduct a pilot test of 20 uh, test takers. So I've got the results here for five questions from the survey for 20 people. And the survey uh, participants were asked to rate on a scale of one to five uh, their answers to each of a series of four questions. Uh, what I'd like to be able to do is uh, use Cronbach's alpha as a test for reliability in this case here. So we want to make sure uh, that the set of five questions here measures the same thing, uh, which we hope is attitude towards medical care. So for this group of uh, participants, we would look at the scores for each item and see if they correlate with each other. You would expect that people who scored high on certain items, for example, a question about the quality of medical care, would also score high on other similar items like uh, that their medical care is worth the money. So we're looking for consistency across the five questions here. Cronbach's alpha then is a special measure of reliability uh, th that is known as internal consistency. The more predictably individual item score, scores relate to each other, the higher the value of Cronbach's alpha, and the higher the value, the more confidence you can have that this test is internally consistent and correlates well with itself. So let's uh, take a, first of all, before we go ahead and uh, conduct the test, let's take a quick look at the variable view in the bottom left-hand tab on the SPSS screen, uh, just to make sure that all our uh, data are, all our variables are set up in a correct way. So here in the name column, I've given each uh, of my items a name, and all values in my data set are numeric, um, zero decimal places, I don't need any values or labels in here. Um, the last column I should check is the measure column and I can see uh, that my questions here are all listed as um, ordinal type data. These are categorical data sets. There's five categories of answers, possible answers for each question. So I'm happy with my setup here and I'm going to move back to in the bottom left hand side and click on the data view tab. So I'm now ready to conduct the Cronbach's alpha test. To do this, we choose the analyze menu Scroll down to the option called Scale, and it's in here that we have our reliability analysis. So at the Analyze menu, Scale and Reliability Analysis. So select that option, and that gives us a reliability analysis window. Uh, we want to analyze five items, so we're not going to do anything with the IT. So we're going to select question number one, press the Shift key and select question number five to select them all, or you can do it all in one go. And I'm going to drag all of those and drop them into the items box here. Um, you can take a quick look at the statistics button and this gives you lots and lots of other options in relation to correlations and covariance and means and so on. Um, I don't need any of them th these to demonstrate here uh, but you, you may experiment with this uh, yourselves to see what else you can get in this test. So I click on cancel. Um, I don't need to do anything with ratings and the drop down menu here for alpha has other options but it's Cronbach's alpha that I wish to choose here and I'm ready now to click on OK. So let's do that. And that gives us quite a little bit of output here. First, uh, two tables. The first case, let me make this a little bit bigger. The first case here uh, shows us um, our the validity of our data. We can see that we have 20 items in it and all are, are, are counted in this test. None are excluded, so that's useful to know. And the key part here is the reliability statistics. We can see we have um, a number of items is five, so we have five questions, so that's where that comes from. And SPSS has gone ahead and calculated the Cronbach alpha value for us of, uh, and it comes out at zero point two nine zero because it always defaults to three decimal places. Now, how useful is this value? Well, there's two things we want with our Cronbach's alpha values when we conduct this test. The first is that the value is positive, and in our case it is positive, so that's good. And the second piece is uh, that uh, our value is going to be between zero and plus one. So the higher the value, in other words, the closer to plus one, the more reliable our data, our, our questions in this case here, are regarded to be. Now, our answer here of 0 0.290 is quite low. Therefore, we can conclude here that our uh, data is not that reliable. 
In other words, we possibly have some issues with our uh, questionnaire in this case here. And so once we've got this value, this tells us that the reliability level is not very high. In fact, it's quite low at 0.29. Therefore, we should go back and take a look at our test. This is a pilot test with just 20 users in it before we roll it out to a wider audience and make some change to the question. So possibly we might make sure that the instructions are clear. Uh, things like um, increasing the number of items or number of questions or observations might also help. Uh, any items that are unclear or ambiguous, maybe we would rewrite them or remove them. And there are many other things that we might do. So in our case here, this low value for Chromex Alpha tells us that we possibly need to look at the, our style of questioning and our questioning before we roll this out. So that's how you calculate Chromex Alpha in SPSS. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.